And now we're going to have to make it work well for Facebook and for Apple and, and whoever else comes down the line. This is not the way it's supposed to work. He writes, incompatible proprietary publishing systems entirely under the control of huge corporations, neither of which particularly understands publishing or the media, are part of the problem. Uh, this caught your eye, Patrick. What, what particularly about this turned your head? Well, I think he put his finger on something that at least I personally have been feeling for a while now. And I'm wondering if it's, a, well, it might apparently be a more... Uh, generalized feeling for, for people using their um, you know browser on their phone which is we have a problem with the web uh, mobile web and app duality I know you're fond Tom of saying that you know things swing back and forth and currently apps have sort of a, a, a better usability uh, rating let's say than, than the web but it, it will come back and things change but the reality is the mobile web kind of sucks like seriously sucks if you you basically have a couple of options either you go to a mobile specialized website and most of the time the experience is terrible because it doesn't it looks bad uh, it looks like it was designed you know for the the initial smartphones back seven or you know six seven years ago or designed in the spare time that people had after they made their app right yeah because they're like well. oh right we should do a mobile site too i guess and then if you're on an iPhone, you get the uh, likely the uh, invite to download the app, possibly with a pop-up, and then you get the ads that cover up, cover up the entire screen. It is a terrible experience. Um, and I think this does do harm uh, to the ecosystem because even though you do have the kind of a solution with apps, it's, it is very impractical to have an app per publication or, you know, apps are good for some things. I don't think they're good for everything. Um, and this is an issue, and I'm not sure exactly how we, we are fixing it. He does mention uh, Facebook instance, our Instant Article and Apple News, as you said, but it, it, these are hindrances to uh, the web designers uh, and and you know uh, sites' ability to be present everywhere. But they are more uh, symptoms of the fact that websites just don't work well on mobile devices. And it's weird that apps do work and websites don't work because in theory the web is now so uh, uh, flexible that you could be you could do almost anything on a website. So why not? mimic what you're doing on the app. I don't know why it doesn't work. Well, he seems to point to a theory, which I think has some validity, that the platform makers are dissuading folks from developing on the web, maybe even unintentionally, by keeping their browsers limited. Now, the worst example is the iPhone, right? Apple only allows the Safari engine, its own browser engine, uh, I don't think it's called the Safari engine, but it only allows its own browser engine on the it's phone. It's WebKit, right? Yeah, it's a WebKit-based engine. That's it. You want to make a browser for the iPhone, you're basically making a reskinned Safari. Uh, and that absolutely limits the platform. If that were the case on desktop, we would not have the robust web browser situation that we have now. Google does allow other people to make browsers, but it's not much better. Uh, it, it is It is really, it is for various reasons, and, and Neelai sort of suggests that maybe uh, Mozilla is a little starstruck by the, the Google revenue it gets, although remember, it did switch to Yahoo as the default search engine recently, uh, that it's not really willing to take on Android. But I think the fact that Chrome is the default browser on Android and everyone's using apps means that if browser developers just aren't seeing the percentage in trying to unseat Chrome, especially when they can't really unseat Safari anyway, so they'd, they'd only have to be banking on one platform. And I still believe that this is, this is the bottom of the pendulum in the app versus browser swing. And Neelai is, is, is one of the voices that's going to get us to swing back to say, wait a minute, why is it that on a desktop, everybody uses the browser? Uh, and the browser works great. And a lot of people spend most of their time in the browser. And we don't use apps on the desktop unless we have a very specific purpose, like Photoshop or something like that. Whereas on the, on the phone, it's the opposite. We spend all of our time in apps. And we actually, I ask people on Twitter and I ask people on Google Plus about this. Everyone but one person, maybe two or three, uh, said that they spent most of their time in the browser on the desktop and most of their time in apps 
on mobile devices. Bill Meeks, uh, who's a friend of the show, said, I do mostly work on desktop, and the only app I really use on my phone is Tweetcaster. So he's got a unique situation. He, he does work on the desktop, and the work he does is not browser-based work. So he's not going to be, he's going to be the exception to the rule. But most people, because the browser is so good on the desktop, spend all their time there, and because it's so bad on mobile, spend all their time in apps. You know, I think that people are used to the idea that browsers suck on phone. Well, not suck, but are less pleasant to use on phones because it's just phones. They're not, you know, you don't expect that kind of uh, device to have the power necessary to, uh, to, to run a fast browser. But we've, we've realized uh, with the uh, release of the iPhone 6, and that's the device he, he quotes and he mentions in his article, uh, I'm sure other... Android devices are comparable. Uh, the iPhone 6 Plus, which is the fastest uh, iPhone available, is comparable in benchmarks to an 11-inch Mac MacBook Air from 2012. That's just, you know, that's insane. That's, that's three years ago. Um, so they should have enough horsepower to design an experience that is at least, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's the speed, really, uh, but it certainly plays into it. One question I have, though, is have you ever used other uh, devices like the ones that are based on, on a web browser? I'm thinking about the Mozilla OS, which might be uh, uh, installed on, on cheaper devices, so maybe that's not comparable. Um, but I don't think any web browser on the phone is, is satisfactory in any way. So. I, I, I don't know. I, are, are we living in a, you know, an era that is similar to the pre-Chrome era on the desktop? If, if people don't remember, I think it was maybe five years ago, the browser wars has, had sort of come to a stalemate. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Mozilla had become kind of lazy. Um, they, they were maybe some weren't inertia, working. right? They weren't pushing I mean, out the features as fast. Maybe they were getting distracted with side projects. Who knows? And, uh, and Google uh, came up, uh, arrived in, in that field with Chrome, and all of a sudden everyone woke up and the web got pleasant to use again. How likely do you think it is we are on the verge of, <laughs> on the verge of uh, a, a similar event for phones? Because it's a, they're much more closed platforms, both of them the main, the dominant ones. Well, yeah, and there are a lot of voices. It's not just Nilay Patel. Uh, there are a lot of voices out there saying we need better uh, browser-based materials. And, and Google itself makes Chrome OS, right? An, an OS that is entirely a browser. Uh, and, and so they are at once the best example of what you can do to be like, hey, you know what? This, these mobile laptops can just, can just use a browser essentially as their operating system. This is the dream of Netscape Constellation from the 90s. It, it has arrived. It is here. Uh, you don't even need an operating system anymore. And, and at the same time, on Android, they've got a lot of efforts. So far, they haven't had a lot of result. We don't see a lot of competing browsers on Android. And that is really the big problem here, is that we don't have a browser ecosystem, and you can't have a browser ecosystem on iOS. And I think people are starting to notice that, and they're starting to put pressure on that. And hopefully, that pressure will start to build, and we'll see maybe some competing efforts start to take hold on Android. We'll see uh, maybe Apple starting to feel some pressure. Who knows if they'll actually allow a competing uh, browser engine. That'll be the day, right? Pigs fly, et cetera. But uh, it, it, designers are understanding the limits of the app system now. It was really fun. It was really neat. It made a lot of people a lot of money. Uh, but now there are things you just can't do when you've siloed everything off. And that's why I think it will swing back. So uh, another more controversial question maybe, how much do you think this is due not to the web or to the browsers, but to simply to the form factor or of phones that just can't, don't allow for a good experience uh, on the web? Yeah, I think that was the original thing, right? I'm sure that's why the iPhone started with, we only gonna have one engine because that's simple. We know and that, and I think the idea, because if you remember the first generation of the iPhone had no apps and Steve Jobs yeah, Steve said, Jobs well, you'll was, make apps yeah. on the web. Uh, exactly. I think the idea was like to make it easy to develop apps for the web, you only give one browser. The, the problem is when you only have one browser, 
uh, suddenly you're limited in what you can do on that browser. And if that browser is not being developed by the company in order to facilitate better web apps because they're making so much money off their app store, well, you have a problem. So I guess you know what you're pointing out another solution, which would be for Apple to pour some money into developing the browser on mm -hmm. iOS and make it easier to make web apps and please make them standards compliant so they will run well on Chrome on Android as well. So wait, let me ask you the question a different way then. Have you ever used a mobile website that you are extremely satisfied with? The Financial Times. Okay, well, that's one. Yeah, uh, and in fact, the Financial Times is doing really well because when Apple decided that if you wanted to have a subscriber in your app, you had to share the money, the Financial Times said, great, we're just going to make a web app. And they made a kick-ass web app that you can download and pin to your iOS home screen, and it works indistinguishably from an actual app. Uh, the only difficulty is you have to be interested in the Financial Times, and you have to be willing to pay them for it because they have a paywall. <laughs> So I guess the lesson of this uh, discussion is, please help us, Financial Times. You're our only hope. <laughs> or somebody, yeah. But take a look at what they're doing. Uh, I, think, I think as more companies start to realize that, wow, you know, like having to develop a separate piece of content for Facebook and a separate piece of content for Apple News and a separate piece of content for our app and a separate piece of content for the desktop browser is just not efficient. And we already have a system out there in HTML5 that could solve a lot, maybe not all, but a lot of these problems. I'm, I'm seeing an anecdotally a lot more people uh, in the content industry getting away from apps and, and making sure that their website is rock solid on all formats. So yeah, no, that's good. It's a good, good trend. Hey, uh, real quickly, before we get to the pick,